Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Good to have you back. Well, so occasionally I cover electronic calculators on this channel. I have a whole assortment here from my collection that uh, I don't have a huge collection, okay? But I do have like a TI-1200 with the box. I don't think I have the charger for that one. I have a little TI-108 electronic calculator like this and it says special education on the back. Uh, one of my uh, calculators that I acquired brand new back in the early 1980s was an HP 11C with the case and the manual and all that and uh, since then I've acquired an HP 15C and I also have this uh, sharp Elsimate, and this is one of these calculators that has the green fluorescent tube display, which is quite a bit older technology than the LCDs. Uh, the current calculator that I use on my desk is a TI-30XA. This is one of these modern scientific calculators with a little clamshell sliding cover to it. And then I have a couple older ones here. This is a Rockwell calculator. This is probably in the late 70s when this thing was made. This is a red LED display. This is the early display technology powered by 9-volt battery. And uh, this is a special calculator. This belonged to a friend of mine. What is this? The HP 21. Early HP reverse Polish notation red LED calculator with the Nerd Pack holster and the AC adapter charger and the owner's manual. That's kind of special. But more recently, like about six months ago, one of my viewers, James Copeland, sent me this calculator. This is a Canon TP7 thermal printing calculator. Let's take a look at it. So this is a Canon TP7 version 2 calculator. It's made in Japan. It takes four AA batteries and it comes with a little plasticky slip case and it comes with a multi-language instruction manual, which is nice to have. Uh, the manual was printed in 1985, at least it was copyrighted in 1985, so I'm assuming that's approximately the age of the calculator itself. So mid-80s, and this is interesting because in the mid-80s is when we saw thermal printing typewriters come out, and this of course is a thermal printing calculator. Interesting. So it has a specialty kind of a connector on the back for AC adapter, which it did not come with. But of course it runs on batteries, so that's okay. There is a removable plastic lid that gives you access to the little rolls of thermal paper for printing. There is a slot in the window here that you can feed the paper strip through. Let's see if I can do that here on camera clips in like that. And another nice thing about this calculator is I received a thermally printed personal letter from Mr. Copeland when he sent me this calculator dated uh, November 22nd, 2019. Yes, it's taken me a little bit of time to respond. I apologize for that, but it was a really fun letter to receive. Thank you very much. Okay, the manual is multilingual. In my case, since I only speak one language, I'm limited that way compared to a lot of people. The way this works is uh, the pages are divided into five sections. And so English would be the top section of each page. There's the layout of the calculator itself. And of course, the top section is English. The next one is German, French, Spanish, and Italian in that order. And they just follow through and it tells you how everything works. So LCD display, calculator, you turn it on, it's in the print mode. Uh, you hit the, the on button again, the print mode turns off, so it's calculator only. You can toggle it, the print mode on and off from there. There's an off button. There is a tabulate button. There's an all clear, kind of a recessed button. And there is a, a feed advance for the printing paper itself. So let's just show you how the basic uh, printing function works. We're in the print mode, so let's just say 78 times 56 equals, and there is the result. So there is this pound key, and the function of it is to enable you to put numbers 
into the tape without those numbers uh, figuring into the calculation. Like for instance, if you wanted to put serial numbers or identification line numbers for your calculations, you would hit the number like let's just say whatever nine and then you hit the pound symbol. It's just going to put that nine as a uh, as a line number, so to speak, that you can use to flag your calculations with, which is pretty cool. Okay, so there is a graphing function. It is the G key, and it basically makes a little bar graph of numbers between 2 and 99. And it basically makes a little bar graph proportional to the length of the number. Now, you can use this in calculations, like, for instance, if I want to type the number 7, hit the G key, times 5, hit the G key, and then equals, and then print out the bar graph of the result. So you can see here my number 7, which is represented by a single bar, times 5, which is also a little bit shorter of a single bar, equals 35, which is a slightly bigger bar. Okay, so the tab key, which is right here, um, if you press it so that there's no symbols below the display, that means it's floating point, decimal point display. If you press it once, it's a zero right down there, and that indicates that it'll display numbers as you enter them without a decimal point. Uh, then if you press it again, you'll have a two, and it'll, it'll display numbers with two digits to the right of the decimal point. And then if you press it once more, it'll have a plus symbol, which means that it'll display numbers to two decimal points, but you don't have to enter the decimal point itself. So this is kind of more of the business calculator financial kind of use. So for instance, uh, $89.56 plus $65.23, you don't have to enter the decimal point at all. It just assumes that the decimal point is there. The display, it automatically takes care of that decimal point. $154.79 is the total there. Okay, so just as an experiment, I removed the paper tape and I'm attempting to reinsert it and it's taken me about five minutes to figure out how to do it. Well, obviously you put it into the rear slot and advance the paper, but I couldn't quite tell what the rear slot was because there's actually like an intermediate slot right in the middle up here. Turns out it's all the way in the bottom. You have to slip it in there all the way underneath the floor, so to speak, of the little holder compartment and then advance it and it will finally feed the paper in like that. And you will have this little problem here where the paper will want to um, unfold itself and so in order to get it to fit properly in the compartment you have to kind of roll it like that tight enough to where the uh, paper will fit underneath there and then you want to advance the paper enough so you can get it through the little slot in the plastic window and then put the plastic window in place and there you are. Now depending on the type of batteries you're using, they're calling the batteries either high performance manganese or regular alkaline. So alkaline cells, you can print about uh, 14,000 lines on a full set of batteries which is about six rolls of paper. Okay, this calculator takes the type TP38 thermal paper and it came with a box. This paper is available on places like eBay. I've looked and they are there, but they cost quite a bit more than 75 cents a box, of course. So I really appreciate James sending me not only the calculator with its carrying case, but spare rolls of thermal paper. It is a really cool little calculator set. This is an interesting little calculator and it's uh, certainly a valuable uh, addition to my collection. Uh, the thermal printing is what makes it special, I think. It is a handheld size calculator with business type features. And when I was doing a little bit of research online, I found a, a personal testimony by someone who used to use this TP7 type calculator in a warehouse situation. And this is where I gained a little bit more information about how these were used back in the 80s, for instance. 
he would carry it around and would use the uh, printing feature and the bar graph feature to inventory different locations in the warehouse. And then he would take that long uh, thermal paper tape back to his office and enter it into his bookkeeping system, which is really practical in, in a lot of ways. So hypothetically, you could have a a paper strip like this, like for instance, uh, location 126.8 had an inventory of 45, 127.2 had an inventory of 18, 128.5 had a number of uh, items there were 37, location 129.0 would have 75 items, and location 130.3 had 27 items, for instance. You know, these kind of calculators came out long before we had modern kinds of automated inventory management system that we have nowadays. Uh, so it's not really intended to necessarily be used primarily on a desk like a business person or an accountant. The purpose of these was handheld portability, taking it places out in the field like warehouse situation, for instance. And that's pretty cool. Well, thank you very much, James, for having sent this to me. And I really enjoy these oddball little calculators that have these specialty uses. But even so, it still, I think, will function on the desk if you want a printing calculator that doesn't take up a whole lot of room on your desk, like in terms of footprint size. It's difficult to find a printing calculator these days that is this small. Well, this is Joe and another little addition to my calculator collection. If you guys have any interesting stories about thermal printing calculators like the Canon TP7, I'd like to hear your comments down below. Okay, guys, until next time, stay creative, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.